because I'm praying and I don't see him and I don't feel him. And so therefore, because I don't see God's presence, he's not good, he's not reliable, and I quit believing. I mean, if every time that I prayed and I prayed, and God, give me this, and God did it, it'd be like, I would never need to have faith. I think, in a sense, Jesus is saying, this is a woman who, who she stayed, I've tested her. I've, I've drawn out her faith. And, and what you're seeing is an incredibly mature faith that we can all learn from. And what was it about her faith? It's a faith, first of all, that is able to believe God when God seems silent. Again, we read in verse 22, And behold, the Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely oppressed. And she's crying out, in verse 23 we read, And he did not answer a word. And again, when we read this on the face, it sounds like Jesus isn't concerned about this woman, that he intends to ignore his request. Um, but here's we need to, again, remember, Jesus is aware of everything. He's, do, do you think, think about this. Again, just think about it. Do you think that Jesus goes to this Gentile area, is surprised that this Gentile reaches out to him, and just intends to ignore her the whole time, and finally he wears, she wears him down, and she said, you know what, you wore me down, and your, your arguments are good, and so I've changed my mind. Now I'm, gonna, now I'm gonna do what you asked. Do you think that's what happened? No. Now, the fact is, is that Jesus went there to minister to this woman. And what he's doing here is that he's responding to her to teach her something, to teach us something. Why? Because it, the problem that she had wasn't just her demon-oppressed daughter. The problem she had was a spiritual problem in a relationship with God. And he's saying, okay, I want to I teach you not only about the problem that you're bringing, but I want to teach you something about what it means to have faith in God. And so initially he responds with silence. Right, now let's make this very practical to our lives, right? How many of you have had some period in life where you've had some significant trial? And you've gone through this trial and you cried out to God and you prayed to him and God doesn't seem to answer. And you pray and you pray and you pray and it seems like God is silent. Have you ever felt that? Yeah. Anybody that's been a believer at any period of time, we know what that's like. In those times, we have two options. You see, either we can say, I prayed to God and, and you know what? I'm gonna walk away, I don't believe. Because I'm praying and I don't see him and I don't feel him and so therefore, because I don't see God's presence, he's not good, he's not reliable and I quit believing and I'm just gonna walk away from him and our faith crumbles. Or we're going to sit there and we're gonna say, I don't see God, I don't feel, I don't, you know, but I know God is there. I know his character, I know his promises, I know that he's reliable, so I'm gonna trust his character even when I don't see it. I'm gonna double down and keep asking because I know that he's going to respond to me. Now again, remember that you have this woman who's commended for her great faith. And what was that faith? It was her ability to believe in God's character even when she didn't see him working. It was this idea that she knew that whose God's character was. It, what is faith? Faith is when God's promises are more real to us than our perception, what we think and what we feel is unseen promises that are taught in the Bible is character. See, when we look at this, often when we think of faith, people often will say, oh, I prayed this and, and this happened and a great act of faith and because God worked, that's a great example of faith. Do you know what real faith is? Do you know, you know what great faith is? Faith is the ability to pray and we, we don't see God work. It's easy. I mean, if every time that I prayed and I prayed and God give me this and God did it, it'd be like, I would never need to have faith because I would never need to see the unseen promises of God that disagreed with my perception of reality. And the only time that I learned to have faith is when I don't see God working, when I don't understand what he is doing. So now here you have this woman crying out to Jesus and Jesus seems to be ignoring her. Does she give up? No. Does she say, well, God, he must not be, you know, must not be good. It must not be who I heard. No, she doubles down, even in the apparent absence of a reply. And then even when Jesus, he says, you know, I've sent the lost sheep of, of Israel. Now, again, the disciples have been telling her, get away from us. You don't belong. And so that's what she, that, that's what every people have said. You're unworthy. You ever felt that way? Have you ever had even people say, well, God, why should God answer your prayer? Because you're unworthy. That's what people are saying to her. And Jesus comes back and almost goes into that. It's, you know, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But what does she do? Even when she feels that God is silent, even when she feels it is unworthy, even when other people are telling her that, she continues to pursue Jesus, pressing into him, 
because she believes in the goodness of his character, in spite of the apparent lack of evidence. She believed that Jesus was good, and because he was good, she, he would eventually answer her request. Look what it says about it, he, faith in Hebrews. Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith in this way. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is when we believe in the character and promises of God, even when we don't see them. It's when we know what we know to be true about God's character is more real to us than what we feel and think we see at that moment. And again, it's not that enough faith makes things happen. A lot of times God says, I want to give you a greater faith. And, and he says, I want to give you the greater faith. And what it's going to do is it's not going to give you the things that you want or they think you're going to need. I'm going to give you, in a sense, times of silence because I want you to learn to believe in me when you don't see me. See, the fact is that God will build our faith through perceived times of si- or, or his perceived silence. That there will be times that God lovingly will come and hear you, what you have this woman. He celebrates her faith. How did she get that faith? Because she pers- persisted even when it perceived to be silent. She walked away with that whole interaction with far more than just the healing of her daughter. She walked away with a deeper understanding of faith and of, of God and of his love and his grace. You know, sometimes people will, you know, I pray to God and he wasn't there and people get angry and, and basically he didn't do what I expected him to do. And, but what we need to realize, we're all going to go through that period. Will we have a faith that crumbles and say, if a God doesn't there, I'm going to walk away, I'm going to give up? Or do we see this as our example to follow? That this is our story, that, that what you see here isn't Jesus' lack of concern for this woman, it's his expression of concern or commitment to not only her need, but to her spiritual growth and health. You see, the same thing is true for us. There are times that we will go through times and God's not being unloving. He's not being, he's not being silent. He's not deaf. He's not unconcerned. It's not that he's ignoring us because we're unworthy. He's actually pursuing us and saying, I want to, I want to meet not only the need that you're coming to, I want to meet this deeper need of giving you a deep faith. I love what it says about this in James chapter 1. Let me do that. I, See if this helps a little bit. Okay, um, James 1, it says this, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter trials of various kinds. We will go through trials. God, that's God's plan. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, not lacking anything. So God wants to give us this faith, this, this perfect and complete. How does he do that? By allowing us to have periods of trial, of times that we don't understand, times that are difficult. And what do we do when we go through that time? Well, we says, if any of you lacks wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to take what I know about God and to apply it to our life. So I know that God is good. I know that God is loving, but I don't see it. I, I, I don't know how to apply it to what I'm feeling now. And we're going to have that. And when we, there we ask God who gives generously to all without reproach. He will give it to us. He will grow it. But then when it says, um, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is uh, driven and tossed by the wind. But what is it? I thought you said it's okay to doubt. Well, here's what he's saying. Is that put your faith, you feel the doubt, but put your faith in what you know, not what you feel. Because why? Let's take the example of this woman. Take her example in our life. You know, there are times like, I prayed to God and he answered. The wave's in. I believe God. God's good. And suddenly I'm going through a crisis and I pray to God, God's silent. He's not there. I don't believe in him. He's not good. I, you know, there's a crisis. I'm going to walk away from him because I, because I don't. Oh, well, well, he answered the prayers and now God's good. And, and it's blown and tossed. If we put our faith in what we feel, that's our spiritual life. And he says, no, I want you to have a faith that be, is able to, to believe what you know. A faith that is the essence of the un, things that are unseen, that knows even when it goes against what you feel or what you see. That's a mature faith. That's a great gift that God can give us. You see, but her faith here that is being celebrated and praised is not only this faith of, of coming and, and answering. It's actually something about the gospel. It's a faith that, that she understands, the, what, faith that humbly and confidently accepts the gospel. 